this video I'm going to be specifically making it for my M104 classes at IUK. We are going to be taking a look at solving linear inequalities in one variable. This is um, topics that come in section 4-1. In this video, to keep it short, we'll just do a couple of different examples to get you introduced to this idea. Alright, basically you're going to be given some type of inequality. Could have fractions, could have decimals, could look just about like anything. To initially, what you're going to do is you're just going to algebraically solve this. All right, so we're going to take a look here. I see a, a minus sign before that set of parentheses, so I'm going to go through. I'm going to change my signs right there. So this is going to be a 1 minus x minus 3 greater than or equal to 4 minus 2x. All right, combine some like terms on this side. So 1 minus 3, I'm going to have a negative 2 minus x. All right, is greater than or equal to 4 minus 2x. At this point, you just want your x's on one side of the equation, all your numbers on the other. I usually do this all in one step. <clears throat> so this is minus 2x. I want to move it over. So I'm going to add 2x. And I'm going to add 2x. I do it to both sides of the inequality. It crosses off right there. Okay, then I need to take the negative 2 and move it to the right. So I'm going to add 2 and then I'm going to add 2. All right, I usually do that all in one step when I've got things on both sides of the equation. It just makes it kind of faster. All right, so negative x plus 2x there is just going to give me an x on this side. Greater than or equal to, I'm going to have a 6 on this side. Okay, so generally in a high school algebra 1 class, you, you stop right there. Maybe you graph it on a number line. We're going to take it from here, graph it on a number line, and then go to interval notation as well. All right, so there is the actual solution. Okay, now if I was going to put this on a graph, and if I was setting the, 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 the number line up, for interval notation, I'm going to use those square brackets, curvy brackets. If you're still in high school or even middle school and trying to graph a, a you know, solve this linear inequality and, and place it on a number line, you may use the open dot, closed dot idea. It's um, basically the same thing. <clears throat> My six, I'm going to put in the middle. I'm going to put a seven on the right hand side and a five on the left hand side because numbers on a number line go in numerical order. All right, this says x is greater than or equal to 6. So the equal to part means I need to include the number 6 itself. So if you are in still in high school, you're probably going to use a closed dot. We're doing this for a college algebra class, so I'm going to use a square bracket. That means I'm including the 6. All right, and anything that's bigger than that, well, that would be the numbers to the right. Okay, so... Your solution graphed on a number line looks like this. All right, if I wanted to write it in interval notation, and I have drawn my graph correctly here, okay, I'm going to have a square bracket on my 6, and then it's going to be all the numbers all the way up to positive infinity is on the right-hand side of that number line, so positive infinity with a curvy bracket. All right, so um, three different forms of how you can display your answer. All right, now let's go ahead and try this one over here. Okay, again, I see some distributive property over here on this right-hand side. So negative 4x plus 2 greater than, distributing that 2, 2x minus 12, and then plus 8. All right, now I can go ahead and combine some like terms. Negative 4x plus 2 greater than 2x, and then a minus 12 plus 8 is going to give me a minus 4. All right, again, I'm going to want to do this all in one step, so I'm going to subtract my 2x from both sides of the equation. That means it will cross out on the right. I'm also going to, at the same time, subtract 2 from both sides of the equation, crossing that out on the left-hand side. Okay, so over here, this is going to leave me with a um, 6, negative 6x, all right, is greater than um, negative 4 and negative 2 is a negative 6. And then x is going to be, now this one you've got to remember, whenever you divide both sides of that inequality by a negative 6, all right, or a negative number in general, then you're supposed to flip that inequality sign. So I'm going to flip it around. And then negative 6 divided by negative 6 gives me a positive 1. Okay, so let's make that little note here. Um, dividing by a negative flips inequality. I almost didn't have enough room there. 
Okay, so that also works if you are multiplying both sides of the equation by a negative, uh, but in this case it was dividing, so we'll do that. So there, x is less than 1 is your answer. If we wanted to put it on a number line, we wanted to graph it on a number line, we're going to draw our number line. We're going to put the 1 in the middle. All right, put a couple numbers on both sides so that we know that you know how your number line looks. They will be in order from least to greatest. All right, now this one says less than 1. All right, so that means we do not want to include 1 as part of our solution. All right, and the numbers that are less than 1 are going to be over here on the left. Okay, so again, in a high school class, high school algebra 1 or 2, you would have like an open dot right there to indicate you are not including it in your solution. But since this is a college algebra class, we're going to make it a curvy bracket on the 1. And then those numbers that are less than 1 would be to the left, so we'll be shading this direction. All right, and then to transfer it into interval notation, all right, assuming that you have co uh, correctly put it on your number line, your interval notation then is very simple. You read this left to right. On the far left-hand side of that number line, there's going to be a negative infinity. So curvy bracket, negative infinity, all the way up to 1, and again, curvy bracket there. All right, and as just as a special note, all negative infinities and infinities always have a curvy bracket in interval notation because you cannot touch that number. It's, a, it's an imaginary number out there, so it's, it's we always use those curvy brackets around there because we can't include it it's not really a number definitely thanks for watching if the videos are helping um, please share with your friends so they can benefit too and don't forget to subscribe to the channel thanks